the Raycast test behavior is actually pretty useful, oh and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use them in your projects. Yay! Let's start with the Raycast test behavior. What this behavior does is shoot an imaginary invisible ray from one point to another. It checks if any wall or physics object intersect with this ray. What? I could just use the collision behavior. No, 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 you don't understand. I could literally use collision no, behavior. No, no shut up. Objects. Shut up. No, literally, you shut up. You shut up. You do this in every that's, video. That's why she left you. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I, was, I went too far. I'm sorry. You're probably wondering why this is useful, so let me give you an example. You can shoot a ray from an object and check if there's an object in front of it. This is useful for something like having an enemy jump over an obstacle. When an enemy is trying to move right, and there's an obstacle on its right, it can try to jump over it to continue moving right. Wow, cool. This is the same approach that games like Minecraft and Terraria take. Let's try to program this functionality into our enemy. Right now, I already have a simple little scene here with a player, an enemy, and some obstacles separating me from the enemy, and the enemy has some basic AI that tells it to move towards the player. Oh my God. And right now, it's pretty dumb. If there's something in front of the enemy, the enemy cannot reach the player. Stupid! Yeah, it is stupid. Let's fix that. So, the way that this AI works is that there's a timer constantly checking the enemy and the player position. If the player's X position is less than the enemy's X position, the enemy will move left. Otherwise, if the player's X position is greater than the enemy's X position, the enemy will move right. What we want to do here is have an additional check that determines if there's an obstacle in front of the enemy. So, let's take out the Raycast test behavior and put it here. Opening it, there's a lot of options, but it's straightforward. When the enemy is moving left, we want to check if there's an obstacle on the left. How do we do that? We can raycast from the enemy to a little bit to the left. If there's any obstacle touching this ray, the enemy can jump. So the origin position, or the starting point, will be the enemy's position. And there's a lot of ways you can tell Hyperpad where our destination position will be. You can put in a position in world space, a vector with an angle and magnitude, or an offset from the origin position. Let's use an offset and set x to be a negative number. Maybe negative 3 meters is long enough. <laughs> That's what she said. Wow, you're so funny. Now, let's attach an if statement below the raycast test behavior. We want to check if the ray has intersected with any other physical object. So if intersected is equal to 1, then jump. And from there, we plug in the jump behavior right below. Let's go over what we just did. While the enemy is moving left, ray cast from the enemy position to 3 meters to the left. If the ray cast has intersected with any wall or physics object, then the enemy will jump. Cool. Now let's repeat the same steps for when the enemy is moving right. You can duplicate this raycast behavior and set the offset of it to be positive 3. So now this behavior is going to raycast from the enemy position to 3 meters to the right. Duplicate the if statement. This time plugging in is intersected from the second raycast test behavior. And then plug in the if to the same jump behavior. And there we go! Let's test it and see what happens. <laughs> Why are you always jumping? <laughs> it just seems like the enemy is always jumping. Why? Here's why. Currently, our raycast is checking for any physics and wall objects. Our enemy object is a physics object, and our raycast is detecting the enemy object. No way! I'm so shocked. This is a common mistake when people use the raycast <laughs> test behavior, so let me show you how you can fix this. You have to make the raycast not detect our enemy, Duh. and instead detect the obstacles in the scene. So how, how do, do we do that? that? I'm going to make a new tag for the obstacle objects, and I'll just simply call it obstacle. I will apply the obstacle tag to the objects that should be counted as an obstacle. And back into our raycast behaviors, you can set it to interact with target objects. And you can either select an object or use tags. In this case, I'm going to use the obstacle tag that I just made. Press on tags and select obstacle. Now when we go back, we should see that the target object is the obstacle tag. Do the same thing for the other raycast test behavior. And now when we test it, our enemy should only jump when encountering an obstacle in front of it. Let's test it once again! Wow! And it's working as intended! Wow. Yes! Let's see how smart our enemy is.
course, there are some drawbacks. If the obstacle is too high, the enemy can't reach us, and sometimes the enemy is just too dumb to get to us. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> That's how you can use ray casting to make your enemies just a little bit smarter. But let's do something cooler, you know? Lasers! Yes! Lasers! lasers. Let's make a laser that can use the force! So the way that this will work is that we will have a laser that shoots from one point to another. The laser can be blocked off by any physics object, but if it touches the player, it'll kill them. Oh no, no, I'm out. Bye. Nah, I don't like that, bro. Dude, this, this guy is insane. No, no, you don't understand. He's insane. He's gonna kill all of us, bro. Seriously, like, like... this is what you're calling me for? Is this a prank? No, 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 no. I swear, I swear, look. Oh, and as a little extra bonus, the laser is going to rotate. Now how the freak do we program that? Shh, shh, calm down. Trust me, it's easier than it sounds. Wait, really? Yeah, what do you think? Okay, we have this scene that the player is going to have to navigate through, and I want the laser to start up here and shoot down here. So I will add this object, which is going to serve as the origin of the ray cast. It's going to be the laser pointer. Yes, the laser pointer. Right now the object is facing up, but I want it to face down, so I rotate it around 180 degrees. Make sure that it's a scenery object, so it doesn't get detected in the ray cast. I will also add an empty object. This is going to be our laser, and I will change the color to red. Honestly, you can change it to any color you want. I'm feeling red right now. I'm feeling red. That was the first time I ever heard him sing. What the heck? Yeah, bro, chill. It's just the color red. I told you guys, he's not that bad. That's... What the? Oh, sure. I should not have eaten that <laughs> And navigating to the transform tab, I'll set its Y anchor to zero. This will make it so the object will rotate around its bottom center. Now, let's go into the behaviors of our laser pointer object. We want to make our laser pointer rotate repeatedly, so I'll grab the behavior bundle and two rotate to angle behaviors. We arrange the behaviors like so, and in the rotate to angle behaviors, I'll change the angles like so. The duration could be like 5 seconds for each behavior. It really doesn't matter, you can just readjust it later on if it's too fast or too slow. Same for the angles, you can use whatever angles you want. And when we go to playtest our scene, we can see our laser pointer rotating back and forth. Noise. Now, let's use ray casting to simulate a laser coming out of this object. In the behaviors, I will place down a frame event behavior. Make sure the event type is on update. What this behavior is going to do is execute some behaviors every frame. So up to 60 times per second, since Hyperpad runs at 60 frames per second. I might explain how this behavior works in detail in a future video if you guys like, but that's all you need to know right now. Under this frame event behavior, let's place the get rotation and get position behaviors. Then place the raycast test behavior like so. In the raycast test behavior, let's set our origin position to be the current object position like the previous example. You can see there are multiple ways to define our destination point as we kind of iterated on earlier. This time, we are going to use a vector, which takes in an angle and magnitude. Vector! That's me, because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. Oh yeah! The angle is going to be the current rotation of the object, and the magnitude is how far you want the laser to go. I'll just make this a very big number, so it just seems like it goes on forever. I'll keep every other setting as is. It can intersect with any object, any wall or physics object that is, and the raycast type will be closest object. By the way, if the raycast type is all objects, it will detect every single object that the ray has intersected with instead of only detecting the first one the ray hits. You can read more about that in the documentation. I'll link that below. Cool, let's continue. Now, if we start our scene, it will seem like nothing is happening. Well, that's because we haven't even programmed our laser yet. Duh. Back to the behaviors. So under the raycast test behavior, I'll use the move to object behavior to move the laser to the laser pointer. And then I will use the rotate to angle behavior to rotate the laser to the same angle as the laser pointer. Now, here's the important part. Let's use the scale to behavior. Make sure the units are in meters. 
So the X scale will be the thickness of the laser. So maybe I'll use 0.5 meters. Of course, you can use any value you like. I just chose 0.5 meters for this case. Cool. And the Y scale is how long the laser is, which I will substitute with the distance of the ray cast. Now, when I go to test this, the laser works perfectly. It isn't clipping through walls, but of course, it doesn't hurt me yet. So, oh yeah, sorry to interrupt. Your ray cast might be intersecting with passable objects, which might not be desired and can be seen in this example right here. The easy fix is to add a tag to all the objects the laser should intersect with, including the player, and then setting the target tag to the tag you just added, just like in the first example with the AI enemy. Alright, back to the video. Back to the behaviors, we want to have a check to see if the raycast has hit any object. So I will use an if behavior and check if intersected is equal to 1. There are many ways you can check what object the raycast has intersected with, but the simplest method is just using another if. See, we can get the player object and check if the raycast has intersected with the player object. The raycast test behavior outputs an object ID which we can use to determine if the raycast has intersected with the player object. I'm going to use the get object behavior to get that object ID of the player. I'll just simply leave it here so it gets run when the scene starts. I will add an if to check if the intersected object is the same as the object ID of the player. And then when that condition is met, you can just kill the player. <laughs> In my case, I just destroyed the player object and used some effects. It restarts the scene after a short delay. Oh my God, that's so cool. And there we go! A functional killer laser inside Hyperpad. Whoa! The Raycast test behavior outputs the X and Y position of the point of intersection. So I just made a particle object and then moved the particle object to the point of intersection. Cool! The behavior also outputs the normal angle, which is the angle of the surface that the Raycast hit. I used it to rotate the particles depending on where the laser hits. Oh my gosh, that's so cool! There is so many incredible things that you can do with ray casting, but that will be all I will be showing for this tutorial video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and go create something awesome. Bye! <laughs>